the latest results from the interventions testing program have been pre-released, and unfortunately they show that fisetin has no effect on lifespan or health span. So we'll go through the background research that generated such excitement about quercetin and fisetin supplements. We'll then go through why this result from the interventions testing program is such a big deal, and what I'm going to do about fisetin and quercetin supplementation. Let's get into it. As we age, our body builds up with old cells that can no longer grow or divide. They make it difficult for our organs to perform properly, and they're called senescent cells. But this process of senescence, it plays an important function. We probably don't want our old cells to be growing or dividing, because they might have damaged DNA. So we don't necessarily want to stop senescence from happening, but what we might want to do is clear away these old senescent cells. Because these old senescent cells, they release all sorts of factors that can damage the surrounding cells, so it's called SASP, or Senescence Associated Secretory Phenotype. This contributes to chronic inflammation that's also called inflammaging, and it underlies many age-related diseases. Overall, senescence has a crucial role to play and we likely don't want to stop that process. But if the senescent cells build up, that can cause problems of its own, which has led to the development of a field called senolytics, which is where we take molecules in to hopefully clear away these old cells. And it was previously demonstrated in other experiments that the combination of desatinib and quercetin, they're both potent senolytics and they can improve age-related conditions as well as frailty and cardiovascular disease. But when other molecules were tested, it looks like fisetin was the most potent senolytic. And when fisetin was tested in mice, it resulted in a lifespan extension. It was this body of work that generated such excitement about senolytics that hopefully we could clear away these old senescent cells and improve our health. Now, all of that work, it's preclinical, as in it's not in humans, and the very best preclinical work is from the Interventions Testing Program. This is a program that uses genetically diverse mice, as opposed to many of the other experiments that use inbred mice. So it means that the Interventions Testing Program mice, those results can be more applicable to humans because we are not inbred. Also, they run the same experiments in three separate labs, so it means that the results that we see from the interventions testing program, it's reproducible. We're not just seeing a strange quirk from one particular lab. And this is why many people, myself included, hold the interventions testing program as the highest level of preclinical evidence that we've got. And fisetin was part of the 2018 group of molecules that the interventions testing program were trialing. So let's hear from the lead scientists about what they found with fisetin called fisetin, which allegedly is a senolytic, allegedly right. removes senescent cells. Uh, we tried that at two different dose regimes. It also had no benefit. Huh. But then at the, the mice we gave it to, they also didn't have any deletion of senescent cells. So that's really important. Not only did the scientists not see any benefits with fisetin, there was also no senolytic activity that they found. Remember, with fisetin, we were hoping that it would clear away old senescent cells. But here, from the interventions testing program, the very highest level of preclinical evidence that we've got, there was no senolytic activity seen. We were neither able to reproduce the reported health benefit nor the reported change in senescent cells. Have you tested any of the other senolytic drugs like quercetin? No. No. Okay. So you tested only fisetine, didn't observe any results, didn't think it was worth promising. Uh, worth. We found no, no benefit and no harm. Okay. And no removal of senescent cells. If you have a company... <laughs> and pay special attention here to what Dr. Richard Miller says. And your company is peddling a so-called senolytic drug. Uh -huh. You sometimes are very hesitant to let another lab test it. Right. Because if the other lab tests it, and finds it doesn't work, that's not good for your company. It's not good for your <laughs> stock price, it's not good for your ability to sell the stuff. So many companies that are trying to sell bottles of an allegedly senolytic agent have no interest in our testing. So that's a really important point that Dr. Richard Miller brought up, and it's another reason why the interventions testing program is held at such high regard. They don't hold any intellectual property. They've got no outside funding that may sway their results. So why did one lab see positive effects with fisetin, but the interventions testing program didn't? I'm just confused, I guess. There are all these papers that get published that, oh, fisetin improved this metric, or quercetin, or, yeah. you know, 
green tea extract or I guess what are some of the other ones we discussed. Um, what, I mean, are they, do you think these studies are not being conducted rigorously or what is going on? How does a consumer even trust some of these papers coming out? Really good question. Yeah, um, I think it's a complex situation. There's a very famous paper by a statistician named John Ioannidis, and the title of the paper is, is called Why Most Research, Why Most Published Research Findings Are False. And his paper goes into great detail as to the ways in which um, the literature can be filled up with findings that appear on the surface to be convincing but are never replicated and don't turn out to represent the biological ground truth. Um, one of these is that uh, scientists tend to publish things that are positive but not publish things that are negative. And it's also the case, whether through self-deception, deliberate fraud or accident, uh, people who have a company trying to sell a drug tend to find that it works really well for them in their laboratories. Overall, the results from the interventions testing program are very important, but at the end of the day, it's disappointing. I was really hoping that with Fisetin we could see a removal of senescent cells and therefore an improvement in health markers, but that's not what they found. And for me, the excitement and hope around Fisetin and Quercetin, it was generated from this preclinical work, but now we've got new data from the interventions testing program that for me supersedes that original hype. So I have made the decision to stop taking fisetin and quercetin at this time. The preclinical data simply does not support its use. There are human trials ongoing with fisetin and they're being led by the Mayo Clinic, so I'm eagerly awaiting the results from those studies. But until that data is published, for me, the current evidence that we've got does not support the use for fisetin and quercetin, and I'm really disappointed with these findings. I'm going to mark my previous videos on fisetin as outdated and redirect them to this one. I'm also going to update my supplement page to reflect that I'm no longer taking Fisetin or Quercetin. So please let me know in the comment section, what do you think about these results from the interventions testing program? Are you still going to take Fisetin and Quercetin or are you going to stop them like I have? A massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. And if you haven't already, please check out my clinical trial fundraiser for rapamycin. Until next time, thanks very much.